that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can think or ask. We have to have faith to see beyond the scope of what the human eye sees. You would care to turn with me to John. Brother Mike, I didn't talk to you any at all about anything. Nobody about what I'm going to preach. But today, if we would look at John, St. John, the first chapter. Hallelujah. I want us to look here and see in verse number 46 of First John 1. And Nathanael said unto him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Come and see. Brother Mount Sr., would you pray this night and ask God's anointing on the ministry of this word? Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. It's easy sometimes for people to believe for the worst and to doubt that any good thing can come out of any circumstance or any individual. We've all had those that we've had a doubt about. And... Nazareth was a city that was very wicked on a small scale like what we would believe the world is today in many places. And there is no place too hard for God. I want to encourage us tonight that there is the title, I would title this, that there is nothing too hard for for God. And that's what I feel that we have got to embrace. Sometimes we look at things, whether it's a soul that is lost, whether it's somebody, whether it's your family, your friends, your acquaintances. I remember in the days that I was preaching in jails and prisons a lot, I just remember so many times there were people and things, Brother Mark, that I would see with people and the things that they would do even there and the things that I would find out that they had done that landed them where they were. And you can look at people and you can look at things today. Miracles often come when things are at their very worst. And it's usually when man can do nothing about it, that's when God usually steps in. That way, there is no one to steal the glory, the praise, and the honor that belongs rightfully and soulfully to God. I'm not going to preach long tonight, but I want us to embrace a few principles tonight and look at circumstances, situations, and dilemmas in our lives or in the lives of somebody else and see that there is nothing too hard for God. 
And that's what we have to get to the place in. And we have to build up our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We have to pray for an increase in our faith to match the circumstance that we see, that we face in our life or in somebody else's life. God will oftentimes use the faith of His people for what He's going to do. Yes, He could just do miracles at random any time He would want to. But there's something about what God wants to do that people oftentimes fail to see that God wants to use your faith. He wants to use your expectancy, your desire, your desire to see a miracle that you would pray and believe, and if it doesn't happen the first time, that you don't stop praying, you don't stop believing. There's no problem with God in His ability to do anything that we need Him to do. Sometimes there's a timing that God is looking at the right thing, the right place, the right time, for the right reasons and purposes that may include some person's life. How could we believe that God could do a miracle if there was never a problem, a need, a dilemma for Him to do the miracle. That's what we've got to look at today. We grow in faith as we exercise our faith and we find a need to intently seek God. Building up your most holy faith Praying in the Holy Ghost. Didn't say the flesh. It said the Holy Ghost. Some things come about by prayer and fasting. We love feasting. But if we see some things in God, they're going to come by prayer and fasting. And while we continue to pray, while we continue to fast, while we continually look at the Word, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So many people today are in a deficit of hearing and knowing and operating in the confines of the principles of God's Word, and they wonder why nothing happens. While we tarry, God is able to do miracles. And sometimes those miracles may not come to means or exalted, or exhausted, rather, exhausted. The little woman spent all of her money that had the issue of blood and was nothing better, but was worse. But at the end of her money, it was not the end of answers that can come. Everything else wasn't an answer. She was worse, not better. But it wasn't the end of answers that could come. People look to many means today. But God is the manner and the measure that we need. He's the one that we have to look at. The manner that we come to Him in faith. He has faith that He can do anything that we need Him to do. He has faith in Himself, but we have to have faith in Him. We have to believe another Scripture. 
that in Him we move and we live, we move, and we have our being. Is that the word? How many of you know? You know that's the word, Brother Mac? In the, in the Lord, in God, we live, we move, and we have our being. But sometimes God uses our faith not just for our needs, but for the need of others. That's why the Bible says, if there be any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint them with oil, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. But it didn't stop there. A lot of people don't realize that there's a double cure for a double curse. And if they have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven them. Sin can be, in all, sin not only can, it will be. Sin can stop the miracles of God coming in our life. That's why we need to seek God. That's why we need to have a repentant heart even before we pray to God because our sins have separated us that He will not hear us. Is that what the Word says? So there is no man that doeth good and sinneth not. There are sins of commission of doing things that we should not do are sins of omission and that is not doing the thing uh, and that's doing things that we should not have done uh, or omitting to do the things that we should do that we haven't done so there's ways of looking at things so when we begin to appeal to God we want to be in a right relation and condition that when we pray that God will hear, and He does hear, but what we talk about is acknowledging our prayer, that He will answer those prayers. And it's not always sin that causes people not to get a prayer answered. There's a lot of things that we need to understand about seeking the Lord. Jesus came into Nazareth. Nazareth. He came there, went there, and that was a place. That was a place. Jesus of Nazareth. He chose to be there and identify with a bad place. And people oftentimes want to say somebody came from this bad place and they want to look at them with a bad reputation. And Jesus was probably the only good thing or good one there. And that's what we have to look at. And said, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, can there, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? That was a question. Philip said, come See, come see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said to, unto him, Behold an Israelite indeed in whom is no God. Our righteousness, our holiness, everything about us, our spiritual health, our physical health, it's all in God. Y'all believe that? 
I know you do. That's why you're here. If you didn't, you might find you some other church that believes something different. But I believe that we need to be a church of God's Word, of God's faith, and believe that God can do all things whatsoever that we can believe in Him. All things are possible to him that believeth. If we've ever exercised the faith that we do have, and God initially has given all of us a measure of faith. A measure. Now what we do with it after that we have it is up to us. But I believe that we should strengthen that faith. And we should believe that in the world that we live in, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how anything looks at, looks like, we have to believe that God has the power to change it. And we can even change the mind of God. That sometimes when God might not do something, but because it we persistently, consistently ask and believe that we believe that He will. And even sometimes the timing can be changed. And that's why I chose what I felt tonight to say to us, to say these things, and look at what God can do for the believing heart. Seeing no matter how hopeless circumstances are, Jesus can be moved. Sometimes He will yield what He might decide to do in Himself and listen to the voice of a man or woman that would intercede, that would pray. And Mary is one that changed his mind. And that, let's skip down just a little bit here to the second chapter. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there and his, whose? Jesus' disciples. And when we look at this, it says Jesus and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine. Now, I'm not advocating people drinking wine. God delivered me from that stuff, so I don't want to revisit it. Remember, every alcoholic started as a social drinker. But they had wine that was customary of the marriage. And amazingly, this is Jesus' first miracle to turn water into wine. They were in a dilemma. It was just customary. It was an embarrassing thing for a person that was having a wedding to run out of wine. Now, we look at miracles that we see and desire something greater than water being turned to wine. Sometimes there's miracles that are needed that are physical miracles for the physical body. But I believe that God deems the spiritual miracles that deal with the soul in higher priority than the body. And that's not saying that he won't do miracles for the body. But oftentimes when nothing else is working and everything else has failed, that's where the miracles usually happen as a rule. And so I'm trying to encourage God's people tonight to believe for the miracles. 
that we need today. Jesus said to Mary when she said, They have no wine. And Jesus said, What have I to do with thee? That would have discouraged many people to just say, Well, no need in looking at God. If God doesn't answer, do you stop praying when you pray? And if Jesus did say no, would you still stop praying if you wanted it bad enough, strong enough? You have to ask yourself, if he said no, that may be for the time. But no doesn't mean never. Do you believe that? How many of you have said no to your children at some point and they kept asking and later on you give in? And it may be that you felt maybe they weren't old enough for something that they wanted. Or it wasn't the right time. It wasn't the best time. God has many things in His mind that might be withholding of an answer that you want the way you want it. Doesn't mean He won't do it. Just means it might not be the right time. It might not be the right thing for the moment. It could be more detrimental than it could be a blessing. The right thing at the wrong time is still not the right thing. You believe what I'm telling you? I believe most people do. Sometimes we don't think about it. Sometimes we'll pray about something and the answer doesn't come, and we just, well, God, I guess He's not going to do it. I've already asked Him. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Keep asking. Keep knocking. Keep seeking. Keep asking. Persistency seems to be the principle that God is trying to get over to us. Mary might been might want to been she might have been one of those women who wouldn't take no for an answer. She was the mother in the physical. And she might have wanted to pull rank over Jesus. And she kept on at him. And finally it might have appeared that he looked aloof from her, that he wasn't concerned about it after he might have said, Woman, what have I to do with thee? But you know what she did? She turned to some servants that were there. And she put him on the spot. She turned from him to them. Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. She used some authority. She didn't ask them. She demanded them. Whatever he says unto you, do it. And that's what he did. She did. And there were those pots that were setting there. It says there were six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. That's how much they could contain of liquid. And six of them, six is the number of man. You believe that? Six pots, and Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. 
and they filled them to the brim. You can be lazy and halfway fill them, but they filled them to the brim. How big of a blessing do you want? When Jesus is ready to do something, when he has a change of mind, and you might have prayed for something a long time, and you may have arrived at the time now that he's willing to do what you ask him to do. Long as you're not hearing him telling you never. Just because he might say no, no, does not mean never. How many of you believe what I'm telling you? Good. Brother Mike, you're still awake back there. Don't go to sleep on me now. I don't mean to embarrass you. It's easy. I've been up way late, and I got up early this morning. And I've even been over to the funeral home uh, for a visitation just immediately uh, before here and just had just enough time to get Sister Duke here and get here a little bit and make sure everything was on. And i got to be on. How many of us are on tonight? How many of you own the Word? You're on the money concerning having faith to believe God for miracles. We need one with Sister Corley. Somebody else may need a miracle here today. And we're always in a place where we could need one at any time in our life. Any time. But I'm encouraging God's people for miracles in our life at any time about anything. And sometimes, as I say, there are times that things come up and we need a miracle and it catches us by surprise. And are you ready at all times? To believe God for things that are needed in your life. This was an embarrassing situation for the people that were getting married. Mary chose to intervene. So there's a lot of things that we could preach from. She was an intercessor for somebody else. They may not have even realized the need that they had, the marrying couple. They may not have even realized what was going on. They were just interested in tying the knot and may not have known things. And it's embarrassing for you to run short on things. Sometimes if God's people's faith is running short. It can put you in an embarrassing situation if you're not believing God for things and you're not up to par. That's why we ought to be growing in the grace, the knowledge, the wisdom, the power, the understanding, the faith, and the trust in God. I'm just telling us some things. We're not shouting and running and dancing tonight. But I'm telling you, you could be if you get a miracle in the manner that you need it for the thing that you need it, for what you need God to do to intervene in your life where you can't do anything but supply the faith to trust the obedience to God. And sometimes God brings miracles in our life and it incorporates other people. Sometimes people need faith 
they need somebody else's faith to stand in their stead. You believe what I'm telling you? And we have to do that. That's the beauty of not being alone. Woe, I think I quoted this last time I preached. Woe to him that is alone when he falleth, and he hath no one to lift him up. So we have to have somebody else's help sometimes to lift us up, even to carry us. There are times that people are under such a circumstance they don't have faith. Is that commendable? No. It could be condemnable? Yes. But we have to believe for other people. Sometimes people find themselves in a situation they've never been in before. And it's a challenge of their faith. How many of you failed, have failed in your first attempts to do things? Probably one of the greatest attempts that we have made and failed in our life was at a young age when you tried to ride a bicycle. How many rode one without falling? Did you do it? I'll admit I failed the first time. We all did. But because you had a persistency, and you kept on, you might have got hurt, you might have cried, you might have got skint, your bicycle might have got bent. Did yours? Ran into a mailbox. <laughs> that explained a lot, he said. <laughs> I believe she's still all there. <laughs> We're messing with you. Or he is. I'm trying to console you. <laughs> but I'm trying to console all of us. Because today we face something in your life, in your growth in God, in your growing in the knowledge of wisdom, power, and understanding, faith, trust, and obedience in God. God is going to intentionally put something in your life and my life that's going to challenge our faith that we may fall on our face in doubt. We know God can, but sometimes we doubt He will for us or somebody that we want Him to do it for. Sometimes it's easier for other people to believe for our needs than it is for us to believe for our own needs. And just because when we did pray, we may be praying and we may be exhibiting faith. But let me say it in bad English. It just ain't God's time. It's always our time. Buddy, when we want something, we want it. Right now, if not sooner. Am I telling you the truth? I'm telling us that's the way most of us are. I mean, we want when we decide we want it and think we need it, we needed it yesterday. That's the way it is. We're real. Let's admit we're just real people. We're the average John or Jane Doe. It want something the way we want it, when we want it, how we want it, where we want it, how we want it, why we want it, and when we want it. That's the way we are. 
were the strong-willed children. But God realizes that sometimes we got to be patient. And so, sometimes God lets us realize where well, these people, I don't know if it was too much month at the end of the money, or they underestimated what their needs were, and they underbought. But they were in a dilemma. Sometimes we don't have enough money. Money, like I told you recently, uh, the boy wrote home to his dad and told his dad, "No, uh, you know how everything is short today. No mon, no fun, your son." And the dad said, "Too bad. How sad, your dad." But God is really concerned about our needs. I want us to realize when we have an infirmity, we have a lacking, we have a hurting, we have a deficit, God is interested in that. He doesn't just want to turn us down. Sometimes we have to learn to be a little bit more patient and wait a little longer. We want everything now. But this situation, Jesus used the efforts of human beings. Sometimes there's an effort on our part. And I want to stop here and overemphasize sometimes there's something that God wants us to do before He will do what He's going to do. And we keep waiting and waiting and waiting. And God said, I'm the one waiting. You're the one holding this up. So we have to do what God wants us to do. And he's not going to preempt himself with what he's going to do until we do what we are supposed to do. Mary seemed to realize that there's a need to have that obedience. And so she says to these young men, whatever he says. And that's a key point right there. Whatever God says. Whatever he, she's speaking about Jesus to these servants. Whatever He tells you to do, do it! And it's not enough for us to do what we want to do. Or we think ought to be done. We need to hear from God. We need to get our marching orders from Him. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. He's not going to obligate himself to direct our paths. Or maybe even one path if we don't acknowledge Him in all of our ways. Most times you will find when there's a failure to get an answer to prayer, either God didn't ever intend to do it and wasn't going to do it, and it was His will for certain things to happen in our lives to bring us to a point that He wants us to be at, or there's some things that God wants and we look at ways of just cutting out some of the structure, cutting out some of the steps that God wants. And we might, if something is not being answered, we ought to ask God, God, show me what stands in the way. What is the lacking? Is there a time element? Is there a 
obedience level? Is there something left undone? I used to get a kite when I was a kid. I, I was so eager to fly them, sometimes I didn't think to fl uh, tie a tail onto the kite. And that thing went crazy and it was crashing and messing up. And you realize it's got to have a tail on it. There's some missing elements that we got to have. And that's what I'm talking about tonight, church. Things that we've got to look and see if there's something that we need to do. Or we just need to wait on God's timing. Or the fact that sometimes God is not going to do what we want Him to do at all. And we might need to hear from heaven the voice of God that would tell us. Maybe no. And maybe never. And so sometimes God has to do things in our lives to help us to be more focused on heaven, to be more focused on that that is most important. But they did what the Lord wanted them to do. And everybody was really, really drunk. I don't advocate that at all, but that was the wedding. But they, even though they were drunk, the influence, the impact, the taste, the quality, whatever it all was about what Jesus did, even though they were well nigh drunk when they tasted of what Jesus had made, it was so remarkably greater than what they had. And even though they were well nigh drunk, they were not beyond. They were not beyond their distinguishment of what Jesus had done, though they probably didn't even know who it came from. They were still not beyond the scope of discerning how much better. And the governor wanted, How is it that you've saved? The best for last. Sometimes after God has allowed people to do things in all facets of life and levels of accomplishment, He steps in with the best and it makes whatever they did or we've done as our best look the worst in comparison to he, what he does. And it's not that God just wanting to show us up, but his ways, his means, and his doings are above ours, beyond ours. And we have to see that. And we have to have a right attitude that it doesn't, offend us because God shows us up. But always remember, He's still going to use your faith, trust, and obedience. These people didn't know what all was going on, but when the best was served, the governor was wanting them to know, how is it that you save the best for last? You usually serve the best first, and after everybody's all drunk, then they're so beyond that when you serve them the rot gut stuff. <laughs> How many of you know what rot gut is in the way of alcohol? But the worst is served last in that situation. But Jesus 
always specializes in turning things around because he says, my ways are not your ways. The outcome, the output, the finality of what is derived in the ultimate end is always better and best when God has his way. So don't question. Don't fall out with God. Don't fall out with people. Just see what God will do. If we will believe and act on his word. And that's what he's wanting us to do. Sister Corley needs a miracle. However, and I'm not saying she's got to go to the doctor, but if she chose to go, don't condemn her. I went and I got a miracle. Sometimes God uses other means. So whatever happens in life, whether it's physical or some other things, you have to believe God. Sometimes God uses the hands of men to do things too. And miracles happen. God even used Moses' hands. If Moses had never stretched forth that rod, the Red Sea never would have opened. We have to believe. Moses, God asked him, what do you got in your hands? A rod? Stretch it forth. What's that going to do? When God wants you to do some things, it doesn't make sense sometimes. But Moses did what he did, and God worked a miracle. Sometimes we might say, well, we've already prayed for somebody. We've already anointed them with oil. You might have to do it again. But some people say, I've done it once. That's all I'm going to do. It may stop your miracle. How many of you have prayed for something more than one time before you got the answer that you was asking. But what you continuously did by continuously praying, you kept an ongoing stream of faith and petition going before God. And then there was a time God said, I heard you the first time you prayed. But your active faith kept things in operation. God needs continual faith. When you stop praying, there's a possibility that you'll stop believing. And you'll get disengaged with the circumstance. You see what I'm saying? So we can't underestimate how and what God will do. You have to trust God, and sometimes God will tell you something that will be opposite of what he told somebody else that brought their miracle. I'm telling you by years of experience, of seeing my life, others' lives, God doesn't always do everything the exact same way. But one thing about it, if you get something from God, it's going to demand 
the ongoing implication of your faith, trust, obedience, your uh, prayer has got to be a part of all of that. Prayer without faith, obedience, and trust is not going anywhere. Can we stand tonight? How many of you believe what I'm telling you? How many of you have seen it in action? God is good. God is good. They told me I'd never walk again. If I did, it'd be with crutches. And I walk and I can kick both legs just as good. And they said I wasn't even going to be able to walk. I can run just as fast as I ever could. And I was told I probably wouldn't even be able to walk. But God has a different story. But a lot of people, I went down in medical history. In my situation, he said, this is untypical. This is just not ordinary. This just doesn't happen. But it did. I'm glad somebody got to see a miracle beside me. Praise God. And they had to document it. Write it down. And that's what's good. Because every time they look at Travis Scully's record, they got a note. This was a miracle. Let us pray tonight. Lord, thank you tonight for all that you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We're believing you to do some great things among your people, God. We want to be people that even though we're a small number of people, God, sometimes you choose the worst places, the worst cases, and the smallest amount of people to do the greatest amount of things that you do. Little is much when you're in it. Help us today, God, to believe you and to obey you and to follow you wheresoever you would lead. God, help us to believe tonight that all things are possible. For us that trust, obey, and believe, we will be receivers. Watch over us as we go our respective ways, and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Tell your neighbor, look for something good in God.